I'm in the bottom left hand corner of New South Wales or the southwest corner. What am I doing? Well, I decided to go for a motorbike ride. Most people will probably work out where they want to go, create a schedule, a whole itinerary of time, where, when, all that. Whereas I had a rough idea. So basically, I've, there's some places like the Wall of China, the Big Desert, Grampians are near there, so I might go check that out. Then along the Great Ocean Road to Torquay, I've got some mates there I might go say hi to. Then head to Geelong, get on the ferry, and then do a lap around Tasmania. Then back to the mainland. I haven't thought past that, so we'll work that out when we get there. Anyway, I'm pretty close to the first place I want to check out, and that's the Wall of China. But it has taken me a couple of days to get here. I started out from the Queensland, New South Wales border, heading south along the Pacific Highway and turning off, making my way towards Grafton. With no real plan or schedule, I'd keep riding until I felt like I wanted to stop for the day, find somewhere to camp and set up the tent, just keeping the general direction of the southwest of the state in mind. From Grafton, I headed towards Tamworth. I soon came to a section where I looked down at my navigation and saw a road that would bring a smile to most bike riders, winding tight turns for kilometres. So many turns and not another vehicle in sight. through the country town of Urala, which like most country towns, has a pub on every corner. And as the late afternoon was upon me, I decided to find somewhere to camp. I found a spot that looked like it would do the job. So I've made it the first campsite, and it has half a decent view. So I've got plenty of sunlight to set up the tent and make it a shot or two of that sunset. Better get to it though. So the way I've set up this main bag is everything's in its own smaller bag. Otherwise, you're constantly digging to try and find what you're looking for. So, that's how that's working. Hopefully I uh, probably end up having to refine that by the end of the trip, I guess. That might be for another project. Camp tent set up. Time to watch the sun go down and take a photo or two. So much for summer. It is really cold. Anyway, I'll put the tent away, get on the bike and keep on moving. into the town of Tamworth, Australia's country music capital, to fill up with fuel. From Tamworth I headed west, through a lot of grazing land, and a lot of cows enjoying life. 
with all the rain this year, there was plenty of feed about. Then I'd come across another small country town, back out into more grazing land, and then repeat. I then came across a massive grain storage facility which spread to both sides of the road. There must be a lot of farms around here to fill these silos up and the piles of grain under the tarps. I started to notice a similar thing to a recent trip I took to Western Queensland. Water on the side of the roads and the surface of the roads damaged. The floods throughout this year had obviously affected this area. And now I could see storm clouds ahead it looked like I was going to be getting wet. I soon passed through the rain and the sun was out again. Then more water and what was a lot more damage to the roads. This looked a lot worse and it seemed the road had been washed away and they were in the process of rebuilding it. It was a little concerning, but the further west I went, the more damage seemed to be to the roads, and that more water seemed to be around. I got to the next turn and found the road was closed, and I was only 20 minutes away from my next stop for the night. I rerouted to see if I could get there another way. Hopefully, this road wasn't underwater. The road soon turned to dirt, but it was well maintained so far. Then the rain started falling again. I'd come across a few sandy spots on the road, and with the rain hitting my visor, it was really hard to see and pick the best line on the dirt road, so I slowed down. I had plenty of time before dark, and I was in no rush. To the left of me was blue sky, to the right, torrential rain. So I pulled over to see which direction I had to head. And of course, it was into the rain. Well, I was already wet. May as well keep on going. I just had to keep an eye on the potholes and pick my line well. I pulled up to where there was a free campsite. Hmm, well that wasn't going to work. On to plan B. So that was eventful. A little detour turned into an hour and a half detour. It was okay on the dirt road, but then when it started to rain, I couldn't see anything. That was a bit of a bummer. Got into Lake Cargelio, I think it is, and the camping spots I thought I was going to camp at, camp at are underwater. So, couldn't really camp there, so I've gone to the caravan park. Oh well, I'll be able to power up and have a shower and do all those normal things that people do. My next issue is going to be, firstly, it's covering everything up because it's about to rain again. So we did have one section that got wet. I may have to rethink my uh, rain gear. And also on the bike, in the haste of trying to get covered up with my rain pants, I didn't put the strap back on and it got eaten. 
but I do have a spare strap to uh, tie it down so we'll see how we go with that these things happen someone in the caravan park or wherever they are has got really loud bad music going so not a small issue in the haste to get my wet weather pants on I may have put a slight hole in them should have just probably left them in the pannier would have saved a strap as well so one bonus of a campsite or caravan park showers so cleaned tried to dry everything out mostly and about to crash because tomorrow I've got to work out do I go the way I was going to attempt but I've just looked at the map and one of the crossroads is blocked and closed and flooded apparently that will mean I'll have to go the long way around through Majura or close to so that's six hours where I think I was going to be four hours do I risk the two hours or I just go around and get there hmm As I rode out in the morning, I was confronted with early morning mist. Then a sign that said the road was closed. It looked like I was taking the long way around. So I turned the bike around, then saw the sun was coming through the mist. With visibility not great, I decided it would be a good time to take a few photos and wait for the mist to start lifting. set off, but only a kilometre down the road, I spotted the sun lighting up a lake, or maybe flood waters. So again, I just had to stop. Now the mist had truly lifted, I could get on with my ride. As I pulled into the town of Hay and slowed down, I could hear a rattling coming from a bike. So I headed to the nearest petrol station. I heard some banging as I started to slow down into town and I gathered it might be the chain and yes, it needs to be adjusted and pushed back because it's stretched. Looks like there's a lot of uh, adjustability, so we should be good. And then I'll have to work on getting a new one soon. But yeah, a few bolts and we should be good. All sorted, back on the road, and hopefully we're getting on dirt soon. The landscape had definitely changed and was pretty barren. A definite indicator I was heading towards the centre of Australia. finally made the dirt as I headed towards Mungo National Park. The track was getting sandier, so I needed to pick my line well or slow down. I'm not on a dirt boat, so I'm not exactly sure how this setup is going to handle deeper sand. Now that you're caught up, let's go find this wall. made it into the National Park. 
The Wall of China is one thing this park is known for, but the main reason it is a national park and on the World Heritage List is the Munga Lady and the Munga Man. They're the oldest human remains found in Australia and the oldest known ceremonial burial in the world, dating back more than 42,000 years ago. After two days, I finally made it to Wall of China. It seems formations like this run all the way up along the eastern side of the dried up lake, or Old Basin. Apparently it's one of 13 basins that were filled up 60,000 years ago and dried up about 17,000 years ago. So this would have been prime waterfront lakeage, lake waterfront. There's some pretty cool looking formations here. I gather it's Wall of China because they're so delicate. I'm going to come back this evening about sunset and hopefully get some cool images just because of the way these things are shaped. It might do something. So first I've got to go back to the other side of the lake, set up the tent, then come back. And it's warm and there's lots of flies. <laughs> site for the night. I had to wake up a uh, kangaroo from his little siesta. He was in the shade but I wanted it more. He's just over there and there's a family of emus just to my right. So they're the only other creatures here. Uh, time to set up the tent and get my stuff together so I can get back over to take some photos. Had a quick look around and actually found a better campsite. It's got shade and somewhere for my bike. More visitors. Went to put my tent down, I put a tent holding and I seem to have disturbed some ants. So I don't want them coming in the middle of the night for revenge, so I'll move the tent. This is an old shearing shed. It wouldn't be creepy at night at all. So I made it back just as the sun's about to set. It's no cloud for the uh, rays of light to reflect off, so we'll see what happens here. Again, nobody around. I keep picking national parks and nobody's there. Oh well. All for me. Not sure how they're going to turn out. There was no real clouds to reflect some light back in here. But we'll see. Now the only thing I've got to do is get back to the campsite down that dirt road in the dark. Be gone very slow. There's a few kangaroos out of the way here, so that's it. Back to camp. <laughs> reason you normally don't ride at dusk, or if you do, you go very slowly, is that animals are unpredictable. It was pretty cool to be out here all alone, watching the last of the light disappear. the shearer shed would be creepy.